And we are back. This is Consumer Guard, the show on the lookout for South African consumers. Continuing on our discussion on petrol, one has to wonder if electric cars could provide an economical solution in the future. With environmentalists raising concerns about fuel emissions from vehicles, the attention has been turned to electric cars. The first electric car was built back in 1844 in London using rechargeable batteries. 2008 saw the manufacturing of electric cars coming to effect. And as things stand, there are currently over 30 models that are legal on the road and available for retail. Research done by the Uyilo Immobility Technology Innovation Program at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University discovered that if one drove a Nissan Leaf for 30,000 kilometers in a year, one can save 18,000 rand less than a car that runs on petrol. Electric cars, however, have also received criticism for their long charging periods, as well as the prices of rechargeable batteries, which have dropped substantially over the years. There are also charging costs involved, but those have proven to be more economical than petrol engines. It remains to be seen whether they will take over the world, with the most sold electric being the Nissan Leaf, which sold over 250,000 units worldwide since its introduction back in 2010. Some experts say we could see an influx of electric cars in the next 10 years on South African roads. We would all like to save on petrol, but over the years, cars have evolved. Now, meaning some of our old tricks of trying to conserve fuel don't apply anymore. Over the years, people have looked at ways to save on fuel and have developed a few theories and ideas on how to go about that. Some of them, including always driving on a full tank to avoid evaporation, don't apply with modern day technology in vehicles. We spoke to Vishal Pemlal from the retail motor industry to shed more light. You know, certainly I can. Uh, you know, I use the words constrained economy and that's, that's where we're at at the moment. The RMI represents 14 sectors of the motor trade industry and has been around for many years. RMI has been around for over 100 years. Amongst the many other specialized services we offer, we offer dispute resolution. Should a consumer have you know, a dispute that he needs to take up against one of our members, they're welcome to get in touch with our offices and we will gladly insist in trying to reach an amicable resolve. One of the myths include putting your gear into neutral and stop streets. You know, the first one, gearing into neutral at stops, and I think this is uh, one we all did as kids. Uh, you know, whenever you, you received your allowance and you've got a vehicle that was probably provided by your parents, or whatever the case is, you would assume that stopping at a robot, putting your car into neutral, would naturally save you fuel. This idea may have been relevant when engines used carburetors, but today's cars have computer uh, controlled injection systems. These systems sense if an engine is revving above uh, idle when you ease off the accelerator. If that happens, the fuel injectors naturally would shut off. So fuel is no longer injected into the engine, even if the car is still in gear. A full tank is also not fuel efficient as cars today are designed with vapor recovery systems preventing evaporation. There is another misnomer that a full tank of fuel uh, is far more fuel efficient. You know, the idea that a tank more full than empty will prevent fuel evaporation inside the tank is incorrect. Fuel systems in modern day cars are designed with vapor recovery systems, so no evaporation is possible. Another myth to dispel is that filling up when it's cooler saves money. Our fuel at filling stations is actually stored underground and it's naturally insulated from major temperature swings. 
cruising downhill whilst the car is in neutral also does not work with modern day vehicles. Another misnomer is that cruising downhill in neutral saves petrol. Now again, you know, young students are guilty of this because they do believe that they are saving, you know, their they, they spending allowance uh, by coasting downhill. If anything, they're placing themselves at high risk. Let me explain why. The truth is that when coasting in neutral, the engine is idling, consuming just as much petrol as when it's idling at a traffic light or warming up in your driveway. They are also fuel-saving devices that also claim to save on fuel, which might not necessarily be the case. Uh, there's also a huge misnomer more recently about fuel-saving devices. These are little additives that you would put into your fuel tank with the assumption that they would, you know, lighten the burden in terms of fuel, uh, fuel consumption. Be aware of claims made by manufacturers regarding fuel-saving devices. There are a number of different devices doing the rounds and each one is purported to have magical fuel saving powers. Now that we have dispelled some of these myths, let's take a look at how you can save on fuel. And we are joined in by Mr. Leighton Beard from AA. So very warm welcome to Consumer Guard. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. As you know, our show is actually to safeguard the consumers, yes. you know, the consumer right. But now my first question to you is, um, with the price of petrol just gone up over about 13 rands a litre, what can consumers do to, um, uh, just to save on um, petrol? Yeah, it's a very tough question because uh, South Africa and South Africans rely very much on their vehicles to get to work and to get uh, back home again, uh, to get around. And they obviously make use of taxis and taxis make use of petrol. Um, so it is quite a difficult question, uh, but our advice to people who are using cars, one of the first things that we will advise them to do is only use your car when you need to use your car. So if over a weekend, for instance, you feel like you want to go to the shop uh, and it's in a walking distance, but you may be a bit too lazy and you want to use your car, maybe stop, uh, stop doing that, cut down on those types of things. Uh, and then another thing that we would also always suggest to people is if you can uh, negotiate with your employer, maybe start work a little earlier or a little later and then maybe leave work a little earlier or a little later depending on how you've arranged it so that you can avoid that traffic in the morning because that stop start traffic those traffic jams that's really going to eat into your petrol consumption um, and then another very good idea is if you can uh, with some people who live in your neighborhood who maybe work in the same area as you do if it is quite far work with them and see if you can't start a lift club maybe get two or three people to travel in one car instead of in four different cars that'll obviously also cut down on the number of cars on the road uh, but it is also going to save you some money in the long run not only in terms of petrol but also in terms of the wear and tear on your vehicle and then maybe one last thing um, if you use your air conditioner or if you're going to be towing a trailer or a caravan or whatever just be aware of the fact that those things are going to make you use more petrol um, they they have their own uh, so the aircon in the car actually you know um, uh, takes petrol well it it needs pe it, it needs more more energy to work a motor and that motor is obviously going to uh, need more power and that power comes from the engine of the vehicle and that means that you're going to use more more petrol while you're using that air conditioner um, the same goes for if you're towing a trailer and um, the car needs more power and to get more power it's obviously going to consume a lot more petrol so be aware of these things and if you can as i said negotiate with your employer um, maybe you can cut down on your petrol a little bit every month so Mr. Leighton, tell me, what are some of the bad habits that consumers do, you know, that consume petrol? I think some of the things that we find that people do is, is obviously, um, like I said, they drive in very in peak hour traffic. That's obviously quite dangerous. Uh, well, not dangerous, but it uses a lot of fuel. Um, then a lot of people rev their cars very high uh, when they're in, in, in traffic jams. They push their accelerator down, and that's obviously going to eat up a lot of fuel in your car as well. Um, people's driving habits are that they, that they drive and they stop and they drive and they stop and they jerk forward. Th those are the types of things that are going to use petrol. And then making unnecessary trips. Really plan your route for a week, plan where you're going to drive, 
Um, where can you make use of, for instance, public transport if it's going to be cheaper? Where can you walk to? Um, and don't go in your car if you don't have to go in your car. And, and maybe instead of going on that long trip on a weekend just for a nice, easy drive, be, be aware of the fact that that's going to use petrol as well. Our pricing structure is actually filled with le levies. Yes. You know, we have the like the road accident fund, etc. Right. You know, yes. is that okay? Is that right? So um, there's a, a lot of different components that make up the petrol price. Um, you've got what you call a basic petrol price, which is around five rand ninety a litre. Uh, then you've got various costs that are added onto that, say three rand a litre for storage and bringing the petrol from uh, places like Malaysia and the Far East back to South Africa. And then you've got, as, as you've mentioned, the levies. There's a general fuel levy, which is around 3 rand 15 a litre of petrol. And then the road accident fund, which is around 1 rand 63 a litre. And those two levies combined obviously make quite a big portion of the petrol price that you pay at the end of, uh, you know, that, that you are going to pay. Um, the question of whether they need it or not, um, there has been a call for, for them to be scrapped. Um, in terms of the road accident fund levy, obviously that money goes to third party claims. In terms of the general fuel levy, there is a misconception that the money that is gathered through that levy is used for transport or road infrastructure. That's not the case. That money can be used for anything from buying school books to putting up new buildings or doing whatever with it, water works if they need it. So that money is used for just general uh, government pur purposes and can be used for anything that they want to. Um, there has been a call for them to be reduced or in the case of some of them to be scrapped. Um, that's obviously something that's on the table. But as it stands at the moment, you have those levies and they make up a big portion of the petrol price you pay. So would you say that maybe enough has been done actually for consumers not to feel the high cost of um, petrol that we pay? <clears throat> Again, it's a very difficult question to answer because the petrol price really is dependent on a number of different factors. Um, one of them being the international oil price, which is what we're seeing at the moment, and that's contributing to a decrease that we are expecting at the end of June. Um, the Rand US dollar exchange rate is another f major factor in determining the fuel price. So when you say is enough being done, I think people need to look at those two factors to see what is happening in relation to the Rand US dollar exchange rate specifically and how local politics is impacting on that. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming to Consumer Gut. We hope that you know, our, our consumers out there have actually learned a lot and are actually informed about the price of petrol and how you can save petrol at home. Thank you so much, Mr. Biet. Thank you, Police. It's been good being here. Let's conclude our discussion for today and also share with you our tip of the week. In our view, a decrease in some of the levies will help consumers considering that most of the people affected by the petrol price are the working class who get taxed on their salaries. Other ways to get funding for government purposes should be uncovered and explored as options instead of double taxing those who pay their taxes. Now, let's take a look at another way you can stretch your fuel further with our Consumer Tip of the Week. Keep your windows closed, switch on your air conditioning, and you know, driving, driving here on South African roads with that condition, you certainly would reduce wind resistance and wind drag. Uh, if anything, that will help, uh, you know, with, with, with fuel consumption. But on a, on a far more important basis, it assists you uh, in regards to, you know, uh, safeguarding yourself against potential hijackers. Uh, and I think that is more important in, in, in the South African context. Thank you. We've reached the end of our show. Join us again next week as we discuss public versus private schools. Galina Gebali Samujuminyani. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.